Hi again, uh, welcome to this uh, second part of this uh, basic meshing video. So in this one, we will go a, a short demo of a, of a water tank. So as you can see, we'll be able to, to combine line, surface and solid bodies within the same finite element model. So here's a, an overview of what the, the model looks like. Um, so before we start, please note that no special care was taken with respect to dimensions, material selection and loads applied to the structure as this example only focus on the meshing aspect. So the frame will be meshed with a combination of line and surface body. In, in more detail, beams element using a squared hollow section and shell element for the plate will be, will be used. As for the tank, it could have been modeled using shell element as well as the geometry is relatively thin, but for the purpose of this example, we decided to, to use solid element. So now let's take a look at the, at the uh, geometry. So let me open space claim. So as you can see, so we have the tank here, which is composed of a solid body. And for the frame, we have a, a surface body of a, of a plate. And we have a lot of beam element that, that were created inside the, the, the space claim environment. So if we import this part inside uh, mechanical and we simply uh, generate the mesh using the, the default settings, we can we will see a couple of things. So uh, first of all, the, the, the things that we that we can see is that the um, the tank is modeled using tetrahedrons uh, element that might be acceptable, uh, but uh, this part is is clearly uh, something that we can easily mesh using hexa hexahedron elements. So we will go back inside space claim to do a quick modification to the geometry. So basically under the design tab, we will use the split body tool to split this body and we will select the this face as the cutter to split the, the tank and its rib. So the, the tank itself and the ribs will be modeled as two uh, independent parts. But first, after splitting this body, we must recombine the, the three section of the tank. So the top, the middle and the bottom. So we must recombine it and we can hit escape. And then we can just go back into a mechanical uh, right click on model update geometries from source so now we have one body for the tank and multiple bodies for the for the ribs and now if we just regenerate the mesh using this settings we will see that now the this part is automatically mesh with hexahedron uh, elements so just with this simple uh, modification to the geometry we were now uh, able to get uh, a nice uh, a nice mesh and now we can have a look at a few few settings for the mesh. So the first thing, so if you click on mesh on the display style, we can ch change it to uh, element quality, where we will have a, an idea of the element quality everywhere. So as you can see, uh, the, in a perfect world, we will have a, an element quality of one everywhere. But this indicates that most most of the element under the, the tank are uh, have uh, less good quality than, than on the plate. So there's very multiple way to change the uh, element quality, but first we can just try to change the, the, the size of the, the whole system. So by default, we are using a size of approximately 1.5 meters. So if we change the size, uh, if we divide the size by three and use 500 meter and regenerate the mesh. So this will control the element size everywhere on each uh, on each element but if we would like to control it locally we will have to use uh, a sizing here from this uh, from the, the from the mesh tab so by changing the sides uh, we can see that the the mesh quality the minimum mesh quality is around now 0.46 it was approximately 0.13 uh, right before so we did increase the the mesh quality uh, and also like I showed you in the previous video we can control the element order here from linear to quadratic so we'll just leave it program control and we will let the solver decide whether if a linear or quadratic element are, are used and here so all the global uh, mesh settings are displayed here 
So basically my recommendation for a structural simulation would be to uh, set the adaptive sizing to no and to turn the curvature to yes. If you would like to have more details about that, we will need to go to a more uh, in-depth uh, training about, about meshing. And finally, the thing that you may want to look at is the statistics. So at the end of the mesh details, if you click on the plus sign on statistic, you'll have, you will have the node and element counts. To show you how we can uh, control some local aspect of the mesh, we can use the different tools that are listed again here under the, the mesh tab, or we can just right click here on the mesh and insert, for example, here uh, a method. So here by using a method, for example, let me just select the tank. So here I could force the tank to be mesh as, for example, tetrahedron element so by doing so if i just regenerate the mesh so now i will locally force this uh, body of the tank to be mesh with tetrahedron so if i do so we now have um, globally i think uh, a good quality element almost everywhere but at some location the, the quality is, is is very is very bad so what we can try to do is instead of using a tetrahedron mesh, we can use a multi-zone. And the multi-zone mesh is really recommended for all uh, sweepable uh, geometry like the, like the tank. And it will lead to a more uniform mesh using hexahedron element, which is something that we uh, want to consider. So now you can see that the mesh quality is pretty uniform. Again, the, the minimum uh, quality element quality is around 0.46 and is really located at some specific point near the um, the uh, the shell element but globally the, the element quality of the um, of the tank is is uh, is good and so i uh, gave you some detail about sizing so now if we if we want we can just include some 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 sizing so we could for example select the the plate here and insert uh, a different sizing. So the, 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 the global sizing that we use was 500 millimeter, but here, for example, I could decide to use a sizing of 250 element, uh, 250 millimeter for the plate. I could also select one line body here and also insert another sizing and maybe use in this case 50, uh, 50 millimeter so if i do this i really i'll need to regenerate the mesh so once the mesh is uh, generated we can again have a look at the, the quality on the the plate and again most of the element has uh, have a very good uh, uh, quality and now if we want to look at the uh, the mesh on the the line element so we need to to switch back to a geometry uh, settings in the display style and if i zoom in under the, the line body where we include an element size of 50 millimeters so we can clearly see this effect here and uh, another thing that i want to to highlight is another type of sizing so before presenting you this i just will first for example select the vertex here and i will create a coordinate system so I'll use this coordinate system for this new element sizing type. So again, so I'll use another type of sizing. Again, here I will simply select, for example, the tree line body that are here. And now instead of uh, specifying an element size, I will change the, the type to a sphere of, of influence. And with the sphere of influence, where I will select this uh, coordinate system that I just created, that we have right here, I can specify a uh, radius, so let's put 3000 uh, millimeter and uh, use an element size of let's say like 10 millimeters. So here I will uh, now re just regenerate the mesh and here we will see that I will really control the element size um, inside the, the sphere. So every uh, uh, every element that are within the sphere have now this uh, size of 10 uh, millimeter. And by the way, so this is uh, an option under the display. So we got a thick shell and beam. So if I turn this to off, I still see my mesh. So here each point is uh, an, a node. But if I want to just see 
the the tick shell and the beam i can turn the display on to to have uh, an idea so this is only for display uh, purposes and finally before we we finish so i would just want to show you something under the geometry tab so if we open the frame if we open up the frame and look at the beam the, the the beam body so the beam body for now by default the model type is set to beam but if we want to change uh, the beam to use for example pipe or link or cable this is where we could change the element type for the line bodies um, and also since we are using a beam this beam is associated with this specific cross section which is a rectangular tube so we can change this uh, the dimensions right here which will have a direct effect on the cross section and moments of, of inertia and also for for the plate we got pretty much the the same thing so we can control the thickness right here and these uh, parameter are also uh, available uh, inside uh, space claim so that's it for this uh, video so again if you would like to have more information about meshing i invite you to go on our uh, symmetry and platform and look at the uh, Anensis meshing training. So thank you and have a good day.